Hello, once again, everybody. Welcome back to the other side. Podcast for those of you who are believers or non-believers of the unknown, paranormal, and other unworldly creatures and such. Before I talk about today's topic, I would like to let you all know that right down below, in the description section, if you are watching this on the YouTube platform, is our link to our Discord server that you can freely join if you're on Discord. Why do I advertise Discord? Well, I do have a section on there for the other side and articles that I shared. So anytime any of these episodes that you happen to come across and you want to check out whatever articles that I am reading off of, those articles will be shared on the Discord in that page and you guys can follow along and check them out for yourselves. So, we are well into October, the Halloween season, and I'm going to talk about some local local entities, local hauntings, lo local haunted areas in Maryland. Now, I will say, all over this globe, for the last several hundred years, maybe thousands, Everywhere that you go, everywhere that you live, every little space that you sit in right now, or that you imagine your friends are in, or relatives across the country, or across the world, no matter where you are at, there is always some kind of phenomenon that lies within. There could have been some mythological creature that lurked in the waters or lurked in the woods Maybe somebody tragically died in the very spot that you sit in. Maybe you live in a house where several spirits and entities seem to roam, friendly or not friendly. Everywhere in this world, every little spot, there has been some kind of tragedy that has been brought upon a human soul. This world is not without spiritual entities today we're going to take a look at the different haunted areas and different spots in Maryland which is where I reside uh, one of the 13 colonies on the East Coast Maryland between two of the other most haunted states of the 13 colonies Virginia and Pennsylvania Pennsylvania, you have Gettysburg. Gettysburg, the great battle of Gettysburg. A lot of different hauntings happen around that area, whether it's a motel or a restaurant, a cemetery or a bridge, or a particular piece of land. There still resides the spirits of many soldiers and many who have, cher who have perished and passed on that reside still on those battlefields. Maryland is no exception to being haunted. Maryland is no exception to having areas of terrifying significance. Before I get into the lists of different areas in Maryland that are haunted, let's take a look at one of the strangest, the most well-talked about in Maryland. Now, if you're an enthusiast of the state, there are books published about this great state. You may even find one of them titled Weird Maryland. A bunch of different weird happenings, weird places are within this book. And it's one article that I'm going to be reading, which is also in this book, Weird Maryland, is The Tale of Seven Hills, located in Ellicott City. This one is a very tongue-in-cheek tale. Not too many people are able to conjure up the spirit of this said vehicle that appears on this ghastly road at night. But just the stories alone, the stories alone that follow are just as tragic and terrifying as the story itself. In Maryland's historic Ellicott City, the locals whisper tales of a stranger kind of haunting. One involving the ghost of a vehicle. For decades, the demon truck of Seven Hills has terrified residents, and when you hear the stories of their encounters with the four-wheeled phantom, you might find yourself afraid of ghost cars as well. 
just behind Ellicott City, often referred to as one of the most haunted cities in America. Sits seven hills with a twisting, two-lane road running through them. It's long been said that those who drive the stretch of pavement at night, hitting the seventh hill at the stroke of midnight, should beware of the demon truck, a jet-black vehicle driven by a faceless entity. Those who have encountered the demon truck says that it appears out of thin air, barreling down the road at a hundred miles an hour, hell-bent on causing the vehicle to crash. And crash they have. This next statement is said by local resident Barb Polyhan, who sadly reflected on an online message board, has stated, My brother Tim was one that lost his life on this road in 1971. He wasn't driving, but with a group of teens that were joyriding. I could still see the picture of the twisted car on the cover of the Catonsville Times. Please don't try to hit that 7th or any of the hills at any time. This tragedy haunts me to this day. Seven Hills Road actually named a College Avenue has claimed the lives of dozens of young drivers in the last decade alone and injured hundreds more. A quick scan of Maryland newspapers turns up countless articles of car accidents on the legendary road outside of Ellicott City, the majority of which can be linked to hill hopping, a late night hobby linked to the demon truck summoning ritual. The deadly hills have seen so much vehicular carnage that it seems as if the ghostly truck was born out of the very act of death itself. On October 11th of November 2011, a family of four decided to investigate many of Alka City's dark legends for themselves. After the sun went down, they hopped in the car and set off for Heartbeat Bridge, site of the local Kai, uh, Crybaby Bridge legend, stopping to search for the ghost of the abandoned Patapsco Women's Institute before deciding that it was time to test the car myth itself. It was an investigation that almost turned deadly. I will say I have traveled on this road a couple times in the past, even most recently. This is not an area to play around with at night. Because there is a lot of young people out there, you know, a lot of young teens who take their vehicles up there, take the cars up there, and race on them roadways. I have seen it. And yes, there is a heartbeat bridge which I have come encountered with. The stairwell to the left of the bridge on the north end side which leads up to an altar behind the Patapsco Women's Institute the altar which has been said to have been demolished within the last couple years however it was said if you if you ascend this stairwell and you look down from what you came it's almost like you're looking down into the depths of hell that's how creepy this area is but Make no mistake, College Avenue, if you decide to travel this road at night, beware, especially in the fall and the winter times. It is deer season. The deer are out roaming on this vastly road. I know, because I recently was down there with a few friends of mine and my fiance. We almost met our demise when we rounded a corner and finally the car was stopped or came to a sudden stop when we saw a couple deer crossing the road. If we didn't see those deer in time, if we didn't know those deer were crossing, I would not be sitting here warning you guys about College Avenue and how dangerous it is. So please, if you do decide to travel, take caution. Then let's move into the seven truly terrifying ghost stories that prove that Baltimore is the most haunted city in Maryland. And there are many others that I will read upon, but let's start out with the Lord Baltimore Motel, which is right in the city. This historic hotel may just be as haunted as it is beautiful. Some claim to have seen the ghost of a small girl wandering the halls at night while sobbing. A rumor states that the girl committed suicide in the hotel and her soul forever remains trapped in the building. Leaking Park. Dozens of bodies have been dumped in this beautiful Baltimore Park over the last several decades. 
Some believe that the victims roam the wooded area, searching for a way out. While the place is great for a day trip, maybe stay away once darkness falls. Uh, here's one that I heard about and I may have seen quite a few times in the past. The Horse You Came In On Saloon. It is believed that Edgar Allan Poe was a regular at this historic bar. In fact, this was the last place that he was seen alive before his untimely death. Visitors claim to spot orbs floating throughout the building, and if you're really lucky, you might even spot Edgar Allan Poe's spirit walking toward the bar in the evening. Now mind you, this is Baltimore. This is the resting place for Edgar Allan Poe. His gravesite is his gravesite excuse me, it's not too far from that, from that pub. So, Edgar Allan Poe, he is buried within Baltimore, and there are ghost tours that do take you at night, and possibly during the day, to visit his site. Fort McHenry. Both soldiers and prisoners of war are said to haunt this iconic fort. Apparitions of soldiers have been spotted still guarding the walls, while voices of disgruntled prisoners can be heard via EVP down the jail. Fort McHenry is usually pretty popular, especially around July, the 4th of July, the birthday of the United States of America. But people do frequent Fort McHenry quite some time, and I'm pretty sure there have been some recollections of ghost huntings going on down there. The Westminster Hall Burial Grounds. You may know this place as Edgar Allan Poe's gravesite, but is also said to be haunted by wandering souls. Rumor has it that because of this cemetery's proximity to the medical campuses, students used to dig up the bodies for research. This left souls unrested, and now they lurk in the night, unable to find peace. If you happen to go to a, a web uh, cemetery, I'm sorry, I'm lost for words. If you happen to go to a cemetery or graveyard, please report something like that. It, it, it is very unnatural to dig up a grave site, dig up a body, because you know you got spirits that are laid to rest, and you don't want to unrest, you don't want to unsettle them. These are people who, you know, this is somebody's family member who have passed away. Could be a family member of yours. Could be a friend of yours. And you want to dig up their body and you're, and, and you're disturbing their peace. Now, some people may believe, some people may not believe in the afterlife, may not believe in spirits, but believe me, these things do exist and they do happen. The Admiral fell in. And no, that is not a story. That is, I am not talking about an Admiral who fell into the water or anything. This is a hotel. The Admiral Fell Inn is a Baltimore hotel that has been around for quite some time. It's said that the ghost of mobsters and their victims haunt the interior. If you're feeling extra brave, book room 413. It is said to be the most haunted room of all. The Edgar Allan Poe Residence Edgar Allan Poe lived here for some time and while visiting, you may experience being touched or hear phantom footsteps. The ghosts are said to be harmless if you, if that makes you feel any better. There is no denying that Charm City is the most haunted city in Maryland. Now, not all around, but Maryland, like I said, does have significant history. And there are some other places of significant history with hauntings that I'm going to continue reading upon. And this comes from, once again, Ellicott City, known for its historic charm. Ellica City is the mostly known for its charming historic district that is perfect for antique-filled day trip. What most people don't know is that the town is also known as the most haunted place in Maryland. With a vast history, the old structures here have seen to share, or have seen their share, of folks come and go, and die. Let's read on with these stories of Ellicott City. The Lilburn Mansion. When you visit the creepiest town in Maryland and you are looking for a terrifying paranormal encounter, 
you might consider stopping by the Little Burr Mansion. The centuries-old mansion was originally owned by Henry Richard Hazelhurst and his family. Tragedy struck more than once and his wife and at least one child died within these walls. Mr. Hazelhurst then followed them into death years later and their ghosts are said to still roam the halls. However, oddly enough, you can stay here via Airbnb. I don't know how much it would cost to rent this house for a day or a weekend with Airbnb, but I'm pretty sure there are some enthusiasts out there that are into ghost hunting that would be interested in renting this home, this mansion, for one night of terrifying encounters. Mount Ida. The grand structure was originally owned by William Elliot, uh, Ellicott, I'm sorry, who died at the early age of 43. In the years following, several other families occupied this home, also perishing while living here, including Miss Ida, Ty yeah, Miss Ida Tyson. Many believe her and possibly others haunt this place. If you're visiting Mount Ida, listen for the faint sounds of the jingling keys, known to belong to Miss Ida herself. Next up is a three-story house labeled the Hayden House. This house was built in the 1800s by Ellicott City's first county clerk, Edwin Parson Hayden. He lived here with his spouse and six children until his death. Many people have occupied the house since then, claiming that the lights turn on and off by themselves and mysterious footsteps can be heard day and night. It's no wonder why this house is considered to be one of the scariest places in Maryland. Now here's one place that kind of runs alongside Seven Hills in Ellicott City. Or sort of behind uh, uh, Seven Hills, if you may, if I may. This former school's, this former girls' school, Patapsco Female Institute, is now merely ruins located on Church Road. It's said that several students died of pneumonia during harsh winters long ago and their spirits still wander the halls. Visitors to this spot have claimed to have seen apparitions of schoolgirls wearing long white gowns. However, I think it's gated off to the public. It used to be once upon a time where people can go book tours today or at any day as such, but however, I think they just have it clear, uh, closed off in general. Now, for those who are into this type of thing if you are a ghost hunter or if you want just like a, a little casual ghost hunting spot and you want to take a tour somewhere always call the city council county, uh, county council or maybe your local law enforcement see if you can grant permission or get granted permission to step foot into these places you never want to illegally trespass into these places biggest reason you could be arrested and charged with trespassing. Other reasons, you could end up harmed. People that you are with could end up harmed. Or maybe you become a threat to the property itself. There are teenagers out there that will vandalize properties like this just for their enjoyment. So there's several reasons why. So you got to have a very good significant reason as to why you want to visit places like this. Ah. Uh, the Fire Station Museum, which is located right within the city. Some believe that the ghosts of former firemen haunt this historic station. Doors have been known to suddenly slam on their own. Some claim to have heard stomping of boots throughout the halls. Now, what are your thoughts on the Ellicott City haunting, haunted houses and businesses? Do any of you guys agree that this could be the most creepiest town in Maryland? That is what this article is offering. Now let's go talk about some other areas as well. And I'm debating on which article to start with. Alright, let's talk about some of this stuff. Let's see. Um, nope, that is not one. How about the USS Constellation? Here we go. This is a boat. If you are into haunted boats, haunted ships, you might want to take a tour or book a tour down into Baltimore Harbor at the USS Constellation. 
Although you currently find the ship docked in Baltimore's harbor, it was once used for several occasions and several wars. The crew members who perished on the USS Constellation still lurk, protecting their treasured ship. Some are even known to fully appear interacting with tour visitors. Then there's the USS Torsk. Another water vessel makes Baltimore's most haunted list. The USS Torsk is located in the harbor, offering visitors a tour of its fascinating interior. But while folks are talking or taking in the historic sites, they sometimes also spot a ghostly crew member trying to climb aboard. Allegedly, he died long ago while diving off the vessel and still struggles to pull himself up. How about another vessel that seems to sit right within the harbor itself as well? The USCGC Tani. You guessed it. Another inner harbor ship that's known for ghostly crew members. This is the only surviving combat ship from, of Pearl Harbor. So it is bound to have a tragedy or two. Check out this vessel and you may hear wandering footsteps and eerie whispers. That's if you do and take on and like uh, visiting ships that are, I guess you can call them ghost ships. Yes, there's a couple movies out there titled Ghost Ship, but this is the true ghost ships out here. And Maryland is home to at least three, maybe four of them. Now, here's some more creepy places in Maryland that also may be haunted. Not too sure, but they might be haunted. The Hager House in Hagerstown, Frederick. This house in Maryland was born... In, uh, I'm sorry, was I was getting ready to say born. This house was built in 1739 and is said to be haunted by two families. There to take a tour of this historic home and hear children's voices, phantom footsteps, and witness objects move on their own. Ah, uh, this one I currently, recently, I recently uh, visited this with some friends of mine. The Jericho Covered Bridge in Kingsville, which is north of Baltimore. Sure, Jericho Covered Bridge seems beautiful and peaceful during the day. Wander through it at night and you may see ghostly bodies hanging from the rafters. Some believe the bodies are those of those uh, local teens who have hung themselves decades ago. Others think that the bridge was used for lynching slaves whose apparitions are forever cursed to remain dangling in horror. Antietam Battlefield and Sharpsburg. Ah, uh, a war site. Almost much like Gettysburg in a sense. Antietam Battlefield is where the bloodiest Civil War battle took place. Just over 23,000 men were wounded, missing, or killed. Therefore, it's no surprise that reports of ghoulish soldiers and the faint smell of gunpowder have been reported here. Here's another one that I think I just recently frequented, which is Fletcher Town Road, located in Bowie, Maryland. An urban legend tells of the tale of a mad scientist who turned himself into an evil half-man half goat at the Beltsville architectural architect archicultural I am sorry I cannot read Archicultural Research Center. Some say he murdered the town's folk with an axe and overcome with the thirst of blood ate their remains. It sounds silly, but something of this about this artist's interpretation of the goat man is so so creepy. That's right. Maryland is home of the most mythological creature, Goatman. New Jersey has the Jersey Devil. Somewhere out in the western United States, we have Bigfoot. Here in Maryland, we got Goatman. But mind you, West Virginia also has Mothman, too. The Dr. Samuel A. Mud House in Waldorf, Maryland. What is now known as the Dr. Samuel A. Mudhouse was once the place where John Wilkes Booth hid out after assassinating President Lincoln. The bed in which Booth stayed in for days, well, three days, is still in the museum, as sometimes upon walking into the room, a human shape identification 
or indentation can be seen on the blankets. Could it be John Wilkes Booth himself? He was not laid to rest. He still resides in the House of Mud. Samuel Mud, that is. And here we go. We got Spook Hill, Burgessville, Maryland. Now, not a lot of people believe in that kind of thing. Now, keep in mind, Burgessville was the set location for a little movie that came out 25 years ago titled The Blair Witch Project. People have been turned away by locals for so many years who are out there looking and lurking for and hunting the Blair Witch. However, the Blair Witch does not exist, but the town of Burkittsville does. There is a hill in Burkittsville known to defy gravity. Park your car, put it in neutral, and you may be shocked that your vehicle may coast uphill. Are you brave enough to check out Spook Hill? The Maryland State House in Annapolis. Ah, Annapolis is another home for many haunted areas as well. One of the more well-known haunted attractions in Maryland is the Maryland State House that is said to be filled with spirits. Several locals have reported seeing a ghastly, revolutionary soldier on the grounds, as well as the ghost of the man who fell from the top of the building trying to make repairs. The Union Hotel Restaurant in Port Deposit. Built in the 1700s, there is a tale here of ghostly lady in blue who has been spotted by customers and employees. Currently, the motel is closed, but the Union Tavern is still open for your entertainment. The Point Lookout Lighthouse in Scotland. Yes, there is a Scotland, Maryland. What used to be a hospital for wounded Union soldiers then became a prison for the Confederates. Now Point Lookout Lighthouse is known for its spooky happenings, including apparition sightings, sudden temperature drops throughout the rooms, and various voices captured via recordings. Then we get the tragedy of Glendale Hospital in Glendale, Maryland. The Glendale Hospital used to be a frequent, uh, used to be a treatment center for people with tuberculosis. Stories say that the patients were experimented on and some were even tortured. The hospital was eventually shut down in 1984 due to asbestos. People who have been able to sneak into the facility claim the insane ghost of asbestos-ridden patients still resides within the walls. The Haptown House in Towson. This mansion was once home to the wealthy Ridgely family and their large staff of indentured servants. Visitors have seen paranormal activity, including the ghost of the original owners. Lake Linganore, New Market. Large orbs and unexplained sounds often make this beautiful lake a creepy place to visit, especially as the evening approaches. The Clara Barton House in Glen Echo. It's said that the ghost of the famous war nurse Clara Barton haunts this house. Some have even seen her see-through figure wearing a dark green dress. The Baltimore County Alms House in Cockeysville. This was once a temporary home for children whose parents could not care for them. It's said that the sound of children playing can be heard outside and even visions of their face in the windows haunt this historic building. And I'm sure this is not all the tales of haunted areas that reside in the Maryland state. But what do you think about these tales? You can look more about these tales online, or maybe you could find a book at your local library that explains a lot more of them. Each state has their own landmark for haunted areas. Whether it be a crybaby bridge, an abandoned institute, a hotel, or maybe a wooded area where, sadly, some tragic event took place. We don't know that much, but we do know what resides within these areas. And once again, these articles that I am reading about 
You can find him in our Discord page. If you are on Discord, click the link down below. Join us on Discord today. And click on the section where it says The Other Side Scraps under Podcast Leftovers. You will find these articles there. You can read about them. You can even check out if you want to check out any of the tours that take place within Maryland. And that is it for today's episode of The Other Side. I would like to thank you all for listening. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button down below if you guys are watching us on YouTube. Hit that follow button if you're watching on other platforms as well. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, when you come back to meet me, I'll be waiting right here for you on the other side. <laughs>